Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Jacob, and I'm excited to welcome you here to Park Ridge Presbyterian Church. We're so glad you get to join us for our online worship service today. And if this is your first time joining us, we hope that you can check out our website and fill out the I'm New Here form. That way we can get better connected with you and see what you're looking for in a church. Our website is parkridgepresby.org. After filling out that I'm New Here form, you can subscribe to our weekly emails to stay up to date on everything that's happening here at the church. And if you haven't already, we highly recommend that you subscribe to our YouTube channel and share it with your friends. If you were one of the many people that watched our live stream the last two weeks, we want to say a big thank you to you all. We believe it's important for all of you who can't join us in person to be able to experience what it's like to be worshiping with us in person. Well, after those two live streams, we're back to our regularly formatted online worship service, and we are so glad that you're here. We have a great service here for you today. Our band will lead us in a time of music. Josh has a message about the death and resurrection of Jesus leading up to Easter, and then we'll have a time of prayer. So thank you for joining us here today. We hope you enjoy today's service. Well, it isn't an understatement to say everything changed over that weekend. That weekend that I'm thinking about, and I'm sure you might be thinking about too, is the weekend when Jesus was crucified and when God raised him from the dead. I mean, literally over that weekend, everything changed for us and for all people and for all time. And in that weekend, there was an amazing thing that happened. Death was arrested so that life could begin. Or maybe a better way to say it would be, death was arrested so life could begin anew and have a new trajectory that would be ultimately the one that God wanted for everyone for all time. 
Now I need to say quickly that that phrase, death was arrested so life could begin, comes from a song and one of my favorite songs, so I can't take credit for the poetry, neither can they take credit for the sentiment, but I do hope you understand that's a song that I hope you'll enjoy at some point soon. Now when we say that everything changed that weekend, it means that God was at work through Jesus, that God was changing the world and changing the way that things would be, and we are the beneficiaries of that. And in a few weeks, we are going to celebrate that beautiful week and that beautiful weekend of what all that meant for us. But on our way to that journey to celebrate Easter in this Lenten season, I want to invite us into a couple of stories of what happened in those, that week before when Jesus was getting ready to be crucified and unbeknownst to many people to be raised from the dead. Now, these particular stories can help us get a glimpse into what God was doing and just how amazing God's work was at that time, and specifically how death was arrested in an important way for each one of us. So these couple of stories can help us get a better understanding of just how magnificent God's love is for us and how God wants us to live and understand who we are and how God sees us. Now, in particular, one of the most amazing moments of the journey that Jesus was on with his disciples was when they had that last meal in that upper room. Now, in particular, this would have been the Passover meal that they were celebrating that year as a group of people. Now, this Passover meal would become famous, right? It becomes the Last Supper. But in the moment, the the disciples would have just understood that to be an opportunity for them to have a Passover meal with their rabbi, with their leader. Now, admittedly, it had become probably a little more weighty for them because of the events of the week that were leading up to that moment. Remember that they had just been welcomed into Jerusalem as the conquering heroes or the people that they thought that they were going to bring salvation or political freedom to Israel. That's what people expected, is that Jesus was going to be the one who would bring political restoration to Israel and they would become their own kingdom again. That's what everybody thought was going to happen at that time because that was the expectation, that the Messiah was going to be a political one and not a religious one. And so the disciples were gathering with Jesus for this meal and they would have been pretty excited about it. I mean, in general, right, you get excited for a special meal, but remember that they thought that Jesus was going to take over and become the new king of Israel and that meant that they would have become the leaders of the nation. So, you can imagine that they were pretty pumped up. In particular, Peter, James, and John would have been like, we are about to become the inner council of Jesus and we're going to be the ones he goes to for advice all the time. And the rest of them thought that they would have pretty important jobs and would have been set for life. So they would have been very excited to be at the table at this time with the one that they thought would be the future king. I mean, we've all been there when we've been at a meal with someone who we think is important, like someone that may be a CEO or the big boss in a company, or maybe you've been at a dinner with a leader in your field of work and you're just super excited to be there. Now, we've got to be careful with that because we know that those are kind of moments that aren't always what we expect them to be. But we know that feeling of being at a table with someone who we feel is important. And that's what the disciples would have been feeling. That's what they would have been experiencing in that moment. And to begin the Passover meal, as they would have, it seems like everything at first was going normal. But then Jesus got to the point of the meal when he would have done something that they didn't expect, that they would have not thought was coming because there was a script that he would have been following of some kind. A script of the tradition, a script of the meal. But when he gets to the bread in the particular point, He breaks the story. He breaks the tradition. And what does he do? He takes some bread and he breaks it. According to what's recorded in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus took bread, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Now, if you're Jesus and you're doing Jesus things like this, at one point the disciples would be like, all right, he's just improvising a little bit because he would have been allowed to do so. I mean, they got accustomed to Jesus doing Jesus-y things and they, you know, often would watch and see it come out good. Sometimes they'd get in trouble for it, trying to get in the way, but often they would turn out really great. But then when they progress further into the meal and Jesus took a cup and he said, this is my blood, shed for you, I want you to do this in remembrance of me, 
they would have realized that Jesus was telling them something radical, telling them something amazing was happening in that meal, or maybe was about to happen. Because when he would have said, this is my blood shed for you, in the context of the Passover meal, every one of them would have known exactly what he meant. Because in the Passover meal, it was a major throwback and a recall to that first Passover that the people of Israel would have experienced according to the book of Exodus in the Old Testament when they were being saved from being slaves in Egypt. Now, to remember what that story is all about, you know, this is the Moses story when Moses goes and delivers the people. He's the leader that takes them out of bondage. But we need to remember that there was that last moment when there was a plague sent onto the land of Egypt that killed the firstborn sons, killed the firstborn livestock, killed all the firstborn animals, at least according to the story in Exodus. And what happens in that story is that God speaks to Moses and he tells them that he wants them to sacrifice a lamb and then take the blood of the lamb using some plant material called hyssop, which would have been like a brush, and to take the blood and then paint on the doorposts and the top of the lintel of the doorway. And that that would have been a sign that when the angel of death were to come, that the angel of death would pass over those houses because they were marked with the blood of the lamb. And according to what we hear in Exodus, the spirit of God that was the angel of death in this story would have passed over each one of the homes that was marked like this. And that's why it's called the Passover meal. In the middle of that, they would have been having a particular meal at that time. It would have been a meal of unleavened bread and some kind of wine to be part of that evening. And that particular night, they were told to be ready to go so that they could leave Egypt in a hurry. And so you can hear all these things come together in the Passover meal that is celebrated for thousands of years from then till the time of Jesus. And so when Jesus says that his blood is the blood of a new covenant shed for all people, they would have heard that Jesus was claiming to be the Lamb of God who would allow God to pass over the people so that they would not experience death, so that they might have eternal life. Both the life that God wanted for them in that life and that life in the one to come. Now, why this is so important is because this is how Jesus changed that meal for the people that would come after. Now, there's a very valuable and important way that people of the Jewish faith continue to support and have a Passover meal, and we should not have any anti-Semitic thoughts that come out of understanding how we see that Jesus changed it. But Jesus did shift for people who believe Jesus was the Messiah and is our Savior. He changed that meal into communion. He shifted it so that we would see the Lord's Supper coming alive. So that every time, every time that we come to a table together to have communion, when we have that unleavened bread and we have the cup that is brought for us, we have a moment to remember that death was arrested. That death was defeated by God through Jesus. That when God raised Jesus from the dead, the power of death was no more. The power of death had been defeated so that we can have hope, hope that God is with us and hope that death will not have the final say for us and for all the people that God loves. That God will pass over the death for us in the day to come. And that is a huge, tremendous blessing that God gives to us. So as we think about the ways in which God shows us God's love, we can remember that what God did through Jesus is shown to us through communion, shown through us through the table. We see it clearly in God's body that was broken in Jesus, in God's blood that was shed in Jesus. We are reminded that death was arrested so that our lives could have hope and meaning. Now, so as we make this journey to Easter this year, I want us to remember this so clearly and not to forget what God has done. That God has defeated death and God has brought that hope into our lives. 
We do believe that Jesus is the one who caused the way to be clear so that we could go forward knowing that God is with us and knowing that God is for us and knowing that nothing can stand against us. And that's what happens when we celebrate the Lord's Supper. We remember that that's true and we invite God's presence into our lives. So whenever the next time it is that you have communion, I hope that you'll remember that it's with a God who loves you at your side, with a God who loves you and will allow death to pass over you, just like God did for the people for thousands of years, God does for us today. That's the gift of God's love and hope that we experience when we have communion. And it's something I hope you experience every day of your life as well. Will you join me now in a time of prayer? Let us pray. O heavenly and gracious Father, hallowed be thy name. Thank you for this beautiful and glorious Sunday morning you have created for us today. For this day, we praise and honor your name. This is the day you have made. We will rejoice and be glad for all that you have in store for us. We give you thanks that our needs are supplied and we are grateful for all that you provide. Today, we glory in your presence, great Father. We wonder and gaze upon the great works your hands have made. Your splendor surrounds us every day. Dear God, thank you for sending your precious son to die for our sins. You raised him from the dead as you have raised us and called us to be your own, bringing us into your marvelous light. Dear God, you are almighty and worthy, and we are so very honored that we serve a God of abundance. And out of your abundance, God, we ask that you bless us. Multiply our every work so that our cup will run over. Let the springs of living water flow through us so that we may be a blessing to others. Heavenly Father, on this blessed and wonderful Sunday, continue to bless us that we may be a blessing to others. Keep us strong that we may help the weak and rejected. Keep us uplifted that we may have words of encouragement for others. Bless those who are lost and who can't find their way. Comfort those who are misjudged and misunderstood. Dear God, please heal the hurting and the hopeless. Help us be a light of hope in their darkness. God, we have many things to be thankful for. In these coming weeks, God, we ask that you help us reflect on all of the many things we are thankful for. Dear God, we pray all of this in your holy name. Amen.
Well, hey everybody, thanks for joining us for our online service today. We really do hope that our time together has been a blessing to you. Hey, please know that we are here for you and want to help you in any way we can. And if you need support in any way, please be in touch with the church so we can be in touch with you. Well, again, thanks for joining us for this service, and we hope you'll join us again next week for our service.